fire, a pure form of energy which has set humanity apart. Something that is responsible for the evolution of uh, the entire species as a whole, community as a whole. If humanity is what it is today, it's because of this. Now, as a form of energy, it obviously excites people like me uh, about you know, entropy and calorie and so on and so forth. But this has been what has been driving us for millions of years. How many million? Let's say two million. And I'm not just taking this number out of the ether. Because two million years back, a bolt of lightning struck a tree in the middle of a forest. And the forest is up in flames. And at that point of time, not humans, mind you, but proto-humans, Homo erectus and Neanderthals, they're running around. And they realize that something has changed. The fire has caught on. Animals are caught in the fire. And they have been cooked. And for the first time since humans became bipedal, they had cooked food. And that was an evolutionary change. They need not run around and try to prepare food. They were able to get good quality food, first of all. Second, by controlling that fire, they were able to take it with them wherever they want. It gave them warmth. They were able to stay in a place without having to go take shelter during cold winter nights. They realized the power of fire. And it also kindled something in them, the ability to ask questions. Now that we have this set up, right? We have hunters and gatherers, we can cook food, and we're getting our shelter, we're getting our food. Who is going to be out there collecting the meat? So that's question number one. Who is going to be cooking the food? Who is taking care of the family when somebody's out hunting? Okay. Where are we going to go hunt? Where are we going to take shelter? When is this all happening? When are the animals coming around? When is the crop going to be at its most fertile? What are the different types of animals we can eat? What are the different type of crops? that will help us grow. Now, these are all very basic questions which help survival of the species. But as they survive, as they get better, as they become a little more comfortable, they ask deeper questions. How is this happening? What is the mechanism behind this? How? And then the most existential question of all, once all the basics have been dealt with, after everything is clear, that's when the human goes, why is this happening? Why, why am I here? Why? Now, as you can see, I'm a very, very curious kid, right? My family, my friends, all around me have been bemused by my questions and most probably also despondent and despaired with the amount of questions that I fire at them. Now, this constant barrage of questions which come from me led to me becoming two things in my life. One is a scientific researcher and two is a quiz master. Both cases asking questions, right? As a scientific researcher, my job is to test hypotheses and ask questions in science about science, what's happening, DNA, RNA, so on and so forth. As a quiz master, I ask about anything under the sun, sometimes about the sun also. All of this makes people think that's all I want them to do. And that fire of inquiry passes on into the greatest people who have brought change. Because remember, this ability to ask questions, this is a tool. Curiosity is a tool that leads to survival, innovation and transformation. And this gentleman, as you all will probably know by that weird hairstyle of his, is Sir Isaac Newton. Now, I can assure you, this did not happen. It's apocryphal. The apple was just a byline. But you know what did happen? The Great Fire of 1666. That's true, right? Do you know what happened during the Great Fire of 1666? Schools and colleges were shut for the whole year. 
Guess who was in college at that point of time? Our man Newton. Now, because he was not allowed to come to college during the great fire, he stayed at home. He was in his home to see the apple drop during the great fire of London. He was at home to develop the calculus. He was at home to come up with everything that you know is Newtonian because of the great fire of London. And that fire literally kindled his inquiry and curiosity to what has become Newtonian physics. Let's take the same fire, forward it with a 200 years, and in 1815, a volcano erupts in Indonesia, Mount Tambora, and it destroys the atmosphere, right? And that becomes the winter that never ends. There is just absolutely really, really bad winters around the world. And one day in Switzerland, this lady is Mary Shelley, and she's stuck in a huge house next to the lake. It's dark, the mountains are all just booming down on you. It's stormy, and she decides to write a book. Mary Shelley is the one who wrote Frankenstein or the modern Prometheus. And she, and I'm using this literally, single-handedly invented the genre called science fiction. If you like Star Trek, if you like Star Wars, if you like anything to do with science fiction, it's thanks to her. And it's thanks to her sitting in lonely in the candle-lit place writing that book called Frankenstein. Let's forward a hundred years. And then you have this lady, Rosalind Franklin. And she is in Cambridge University. Now what is fire to do, to do with her? Just at the end of World War I, she decides to study about coal and how it can be the perfect thing to be used as a fuel or how it can be used as a way to take away gases and to stop and filter noxious substances. She joined the research for coal and decided that I will figure out how coal and fire work. And that leads her to go away from physical chemistry and come into X-ray uh, spectro spectrometry. And that's when she takes a photograph called Photo 51 and she discovers the double helical structure of DNA, which is what opened up the world of biotechnology. Everything you know about DNA, everything you know about RNA is because of the photo she took. And I am who I am because of the work she did. Now, all of these people asked questions. All of these people were driven to do new things. That spirit of inquiry. And that spirit of inquiry comes because of these people not accepting the fact that the world is fine as it is. The world will only progress. History has shown us time again and again, the world will progress only if you question, what if, why not? These are people who asked those questions and took it forward. Now, as I told you, I react with students, I work with colleagues in the lab, but one of the, my favorite people to work with are kids. I go to schools and I do something called an AMA. It's called an Ask Me Anything. Now, when I do these quiz workshops, one of the things I do is tell them, don't memorize trivia, right? Don't remember, oh, okay, this year this, this person was a president, or this year this person won the cup, no. You have to exercise your muscle of inquiry. Your inquisitive nature is what you need to develop. And that's when they learn to ask questions and we free them and ask them any question you can, you please ask away. So, I have a few examples. This is from a student from class 9A who named all the planets in the solar system. Nice. How many of you know this? Let's figure it out. It's pretty much all Roman and Greek, right? Mars, Jupiter, Venus, all. The only planet that's not named after a Greek, a Greek or Roman god is Earth, which is named after Terra, right? Now, till the late uh, 20th century, 19th century, this was a procedure. Then we have the International Ato Astronomical Union. They still said, it's fine, we will keep doing it, and we still name planets after the Roman and Greek gods. Fun question, okay? Question number two. Why is left-handed population much lesser than right-handed population? What causes this? Why is it so? Have you ever thought of it? We are right-handed or left-handed? There should be a 50% chance, right? 
No, there's more of dextro people than sinistro people. Here is the plan. I didn't know this, so we had to discover it ourselves. And we came across this wonderful hypothesis that in olden days, when men went into war, they had to protect their heart, which was the most important piece of organ. So they used to have a shield here on the left-hand side while having the right hand ready to do all the stabby, stabby, knifey, knifey bits. Right? Okay. What about the women? Women had to make sure that the babies go to sleep. And they realized by holding a baby close to the heart, the baby will be calmed down by the rhythmic beat of the heart and then go to sleep. Thereby allowing the right hand to do stabby, no, not stabby, stabby, cut, 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 or whatever other stuff that they want to do. This is why, naturally, we decided to become right-handed. But why is not everyone right-handed? Because genetically, we do have a predisposition towards 50% and that's why we have at least a 10% population of left-handed. Now, how many of you knew this? I'm guessing zero. It's thanks to this kid's question, right? Let's go to the next question. So, my question is, when we are swimming in underwater, in for a few minutes, we cannot breathe, but in water, there is hydrogen and oxygen. There is oxygen, but why you cannot breathe? Sir, this is my question from a class 7C student. Fantastic question. Agreed. Water has oxygen. We breathe oxygen. Oxygen is also part of everything. It is oxygen and hydrogen and nitrogen. Why don't we do it? Well, then I had to explain about why it's in water form. It's a different compound. It's H2O. It's a completely different compound. And that's why we couldn't breathe it. Fantastic deep dive into, well, breathing. Okay, let's go to, to Bertie Ashley, sir. Are angels real? What is their duty? Are unicorns real? If real, where are they? How tears come from our eyes? How do they find colors? What is the difference between shades and colors? How do they separate shades from colors? I love this. You give a person, a kid, a piece of paper, ask them whatever you want, they will go from the most extreme of unicorns to the most proper direct human connection of tears. Right? Both of them are in the exact opposite of the spectrum, but it is as interesting to them as it is to anybody else. Sir, I like the way you express your knowledge and surprise to see a 100% curious person to know about everything. I also want and love to do research and question people and who don't know the answer. Thank you. And that question from class 8. When baby in mother's stomach is a cell, does it also respire? If, do you, if so, where does it get its oxygen from? From the mother, from the placenta. But fantastic. The ability of an 8 standard kid to think about that to understand the concept of respiration and osmosis and placental respiration. Fantastic. Okay, last one. I'll go in reverse. Uh, sir, loved your English and way of speaking. The things you said made me question everything. Thank you. Already done. What is zero divided by zero? Who founded electricity? Edison or Nikola Tesla? What did, when did everything start? What is life? Come on, it doesn't get better than this, right? Now, from these questions, this is what I'm coming to you. This is the fire starters guide to igniting curiosity. How are you all going to be curious? How are you going to stay curious? Three things. First, stay childlike, not childish. Children ask questions all the time and they can ask about anything. But at some point of time as they grow up, they learn to be silent. Unlearn that silence. Go ahead, ask that question. Two, connect the unconnected. Yeah, they are unicorns, they are tears, there's all of this around. It's okay, ask the question. It can be all over the place, but there will be something that might connect it. Third, make room for wonder. We were all that kid at some point of time, right? We were also wondered about everything and we were full of dreams and fantasies. Where did those things go? When did you stop asking about unicorns? When did you stop thinking about angels? Bring back that wonder. And I promise you that that will grow and that will become the spark that becomes the curiosity which is responsible for humanity doing exactly what it is now. The progress of history, the progress of the universe, especially of humanity, depends on people asking questions. So don't stop asking questions. Tonight, don't go home with an answer. Go home with a question. Thank you.